It's Platt, and today I try a Belgian classic. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the uh, particular beer I have today is Duville, uh, Belgian Strong Ale, or Belgian Strong Blonde Ale, however you want to refer to it. Uh, it comes to us from the fine folks at Duvel Mortgat Brewing, based in Bringdonk, Belgium. Hopefully I said all that uh, right. A little background to Duvel. Uh, Duvel was founded in 1871 by a gentleman named Jan Leonard Mortgat. He came from a whole line of uh, brewers, apparently it, it, you know, it was kind of the family tradition kind of thing. And that worked out great with the brewery because the family still involved today. I believe it's the fourth generation of the family is still involved with the brewery. So kind of makes it a great story. I'm sure Jan would be happy to know the, the family still involved. Uh, the brewery, it's, or the family itself, didn't really take over full control of the brewery till the 1950s. But since its inception, the family has been involved in some form or fashion, which again, uh, kind of cool. Uh, for the history of the brewery, for the most part, it was kind of a small Belgian brewery. Did not have a large footprint in the overall European or international beer market. And by the 1970s, the company was already in trouble. They weren't sure they were going to make it. Uh, but uh, fortunately for them, they were able to get a deal with a Danish beer company called Tuborg that uh, they were to bottle and distribute their beers in Belgium. And that was just enough to give them, you know, extra cash flow resources to give them time to kind of turn the thing around. Uh, also gave them the capital they needed to push and distribute their flagship beer, which is Duvel. Now, the word Duvel is a, Brit is a Danish slang for the word devil. Um, some people say they got the name of the beer because it's a higher ABV beer that some people say, well, it's a devil of a beer. Uh, we're not 100% sure that's where that comes from, but it, you know, it sounds like a fun little um, story there. Um, after Duvel was able to turn things around, uh, they only had the licensing agreement with Tuborg for about 10 years or so. But again, that was enough time for them to turn things around. And once they got Duvel, that brand, up and going, uh, they took the additional resources and did something unique at the time, they got into the American craft beer scene. Um, they were an original investor in uh, Brewery Oma Gang, which is based in Cooperstown, New York. Uh, apparently, a couple of the founders at Oma Gang, uh, before they started the brewery, they were actually importers and distributors of Duvel here in the U.S. So that relationship had already been developed, uh, which kind of makes sense. But Duvel continued their presence in the American craft beer scene. Uh, in 2014, they purchased Boulevard Brewing out of Kansas City, and the next year they purchased Firestone Walker. So between Oma Gang, Boulevard, and Firestone Walker, that is you know three well-known names in the American craft beer scene, and that definitely uh, gave them a, a stronger presence here. Uh, Duvel also, throughout this process, also started to pick up a couple of Belgian breweries, and I think a couple other European breweries. So. They are no longer the the new kid in town. They're I want they're not the you know they're not in the same stratosphere as Heineken, Bud, Miller, Coors, all those. But they're probably that next step down, and uh, they continue to grow. As far as the home brewery itself, the Duvel Mortgat Brewery there in uh, Breendonk. Uh, besides the Duvel beers, they also produce a couple other beers. Uh, one is called. Merit Seuss, hopefully I said that right, in a line of Abbey Ales. And the other is called Vedette, V-E-D-E-T-T. -T. Uh, originally started off as a line of luxury lagers, but now they kind of expanded the line. They have IPAs and Blondes or whatever. So there are a couple other beers they produce uh, there besides Duvel. As far as the Duvel brand goes, there's a couple of variations on this beer. One is called Duvel 6.66 with 6.66% ABV, also six different hops in the beer, definitely playing up the whole devil theme uh, thing for sure. And uh, lastly is Duvel Triple Hopped. Um, each beer, they have a few varieties of this beer, and each variety features a separate hop. I know there's Duvel Citra, I think there's a Saz, I think there's an Amarillo, uh, but they do, uh, you know, they feature that hop, 
and they do all three hop additions with just that hop. So if you're a home brewer and kind of know what, you know, citrus hops smell like and taste like, then, you know, you could drink that beer and really pick it up or, you know, any of the other hops. But I think that's kind of a cool, you know, t style of beer for the uh, beer nerds like us. Well, before we try this particular beer, though, let's check out the stats. So today I thought I'd talk to you about the Belgian Strong Ale. Uh, not the most popular variety of beer. Uh, you don't see, if, if a brewmaster here in the U.S. and like a craft brewery are going to do Belgian style beers, so generally do a double or a triple. Saison, farmhouse ales, uh, maybe some of the Belgian style wit beers, but you don't see a lot of them do the Belgian Strong Ale. And so I, I, I just thought I'd talk about the style a little more for those of you that may or may not have tried one of these before. Uh, real quick, let's go over the numbers. SRM 3 to 10, this is going to be on a lighter colored beer. Uh, IBUs 25 to 50, that seems like a bigger number, but don't let it fool you. There's, this is a bigger beer, a maltier beer, it's just for balance. You're not going to pick up a lot of hop uh, flavor or bitterness in this particular beer. Uh, going back to the color, um, generally pale, you may find some varieties that have a little bit of copper, like a lighter copper, but this tends to be a pale beer. Uh, the beer pours clear. Uh, this just looks like a, a slightly darker, more golden version of like a, either like a blonde ale or your, you know, big domestic Bud Coors Miller or it pours, like I said, fairly clear. Uh, carbonation wise, it's going to be medium plus, a little more carbonated uh, than your average beer. And I think that helps here with the body and the viscosity and the drinkability because uh, it is, again, a higher ABV beer. Uh, ABV, we're looking at 7 to 11 range. So this is something you'd sip. Uh, this is not something you're going to buy, buy a pitcher of or a 12 pack of, uh, per se. Uh, the finish, it's going to be short to medium minus finish. Uh, does not linger in the mouth. Uh, it's pretty straightforward beer as far as flavor goes. Uh, it tends to have a softer body. And again, I think part of that is due to the combination. So even though it's a higher ABV beer, and when we think about that, we think of big IPAs and stouts and stuff like that. And those tend to have a longer finish, be a little more viscous. This is, as far as body, drinkability is very approachable that's why it's kind of a dangerous beer in a little bit because it is a somewhat easy drinking but again at, at eight nine ten percent abv that could sneak up on you well enough about this style let's give this beer a try all right got a little aggressive with the pour but nice Thick white head, a real light head, plenty of bubbles coming through. A um, little more malt than hops on the nose. Like I said, you're not really going to get a lot of hops on this, even though, you know, IBUs we could be, you know, close to 50 on. But uh, let's give her a try. Oh, man. That is nice. Do pick up a little hops in the back of the mouth, not predominant, but it does come through. So again, this is a balanced beer. It's not malt bomb. Just, just a slight hint of, of the hops on the nose, but uh, like it's more in the flavor. It's just a nice drinkable ale. Um, it does have a l slight bit of that Euro font to it. Um, you know, there's just something about a lot of those European beers that have just a, a slight different taste. Uh, could be the Noble Hops to the you know, they may be used or whatever but uh overall just a real nice <clears throat> drinkable beer real approachable um 
if it's still light enough beer I can drink in the summertime, um, you know, goes good, you know, kind of on a patio and the sun goes down. Uh, I've always loved this type of beer. I think it's something nice and different to have because you don't, sometimes you want a clearer, easier drinking beer, but it doesn't have to be 3.8% or 4.2. It could have some substance and some uh, meat on the bone per se, but still be very drinkable and enjoyable uh, type of beer. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Until next time, bottoms up.